Hey guys, welcome to TGS, and today we're going to be talking about the differences and comparisons between the Maruku shotgun and the Browning shotgun. Most of this is going to be kind of emotive and conjectural, but hey, that's what you're watching. Let's have a look. So in front of me I have a Maruku MK70 Grade 5 and a Browning B525 Shadow Game Gun. The, the guns in question aren't really important. We're going to do more of a brand comparison at... Well, it's not even really a brand comparison. There's not a great deal to say between them. Needless to say, Browning got into bed with Maruku like 50 years ago now. So they are very much the same. And since the early 80s, they are pretty much identical. I mean, in 1970, Maruku started making the Satori for Browning, and that was the birth of the Japanese Browning shotgun, not including the BT-99 beforehand, but that's by the by. So they made that. That was great. And then on in 1980, both actions became congruous, a.k.a identical in pretty much every internal way. And then they came up with the 725, and the 725 was different to the standard Mark 60, 70, and 38, but they also make something called a Mark 11 that's available in other parts of the world apart from England, which is a 725 action gun. So what is the real difference? Well, internally and mechanically, the answer is zero, providing you're buying a 525 base action and a Mark 60, 38, or 70. So there's no real advantage or disadvantage between the two. And now we're going to get into the conjecture. And this, this is based off of, uh, well, historical reference as much as knowing that humans are humans. If you owned a factory making guns for somebody else, and all of the parts came, and everything was the same, but you had two identical things, and you had to pick where one was slightly better and one was slightly worse, whose was going to go into which pile and whose was going to go into the other, that's literally all I'm going to say there. I don't know. But in my head, that is the case. So that is point one. I always feel like the Maruku is going to have the better finish quality because the guys at the Maruku group may prefer, in ever so slight differences of tolerances, let's say one, the slightly better one's going to go in the Maruku pile. The chances of that actually happening, by the way, are absolutely zero. But... I like to think that in my head. And that's a large portion of why that I own a Maruku and not a Browning, although I have owned Brownings in the past and I, to be honest, think they are equally good guns. Maybe, equally good guns. Um, maybe, that's kind of ruining the film. I shouldn't say stuff like this. So the other reason is this, is that Maruku, at least in the UK and in other parts of the world, really spends absolutely nothing on marketing. And so I like to feel like owning a Maruku is just slightly more woke than owning a Browning. You're like, yeah, I kind of know. I'm in the know. I know, I know. I own a Maruku. And everyone goes, yeah, they're amazing guns. And they don't spend millions on marketing. There's something about Browning and other brands out there, but we're talking about Browning now, that to see everyone walking around in Buckmark hoodies, um, as much as I own one, um, and do love a buck mark. There's something quite pleasant about not being part of that mainstream and to be slightly alternative and own a Maruku is quite an interesting thing. My other reason for loving Maruku, apart from the fact that, you know, I like to be alternative and the fact that I think that maybe if there was ever any nepotistic part choosery, that nepotistic part choosery would lean towards their own made or own branded guns, even though it's probably not true. It's that simplicity that just appeals to me. Marketing hype as into sort of gun performance technology doesn't do a great deal for me. There's not a lot that has gone on in gun internals, certainly inside of these two actions, that is going to make them a slightly better gun. There are better guns out there with better triggers and so on and so forth. But the fact that a 525 series gun in an Ultra XS is marketed with X, Y, and Z and super performance fairy dust does not make it a better performing gun. It isn't going to make it hit more clays. It's generally the nut behind the bolt, the big squidgy pink thing trying to move that thing in front of the clay that makes the huge difference here. And it's that simplicity and lack of marketing that makes these kind of appeal. The spec on on these Marukus has not changed very much since the 19, late 1970s. Uh, this one may be slightly different, but they still use the same, well, this is Invector Plus, so it's a 90s thing, but they still use, in a Mark 60, for example, the same fixed chokes, the same tapers. Yes, the bore internals have changed ever so slightly. 
but not a huge amount. One presumes that is an economy of scale thing over anything else. And that economy of scale thing is exciting, meaningful, maybe. So if you're gonna get an 18.8 .8 bore and you're boring all your tubes at that, why not bore the Maruka tubes at that? So I think that's just a, a by the by. I don't think there's anything better. They never marketed it as a better thing in a Maruku. There's something just simple and perfect and unenforced upon you when you go and buy a Maruku. You buy one because it is a shooter's gun for shooters, not because it's got internally Teflon, Chromium, lib 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 barrels made of positive energy. They're just guns. And anyone who ever says the word Maruku goes, yeah, they're good. Look, I don't know. This probably hasn't been useful in the slightest. I would probably own a brownie equally as fast as a Maruku. So I don't, I'm not really knocking that. But that is my lean towards Maruku. And now we're gonna flip those tables over because this is the important part as why I would buy a browning over a Maruku. And this is the really more difficult bit because it goes against my soul. It doesn't actually. All of what I've just said about technology not mattering. Well, it kind of does. And more importantly, specs and the ability to spec your gun does. So you are limited when you buy a Maruku, and here's a big deal. You are limited when you buy a Maruku. They do three models in the UK, and they do other models in other parts of the world. You are limited in stock spec. They do a grade one and a grade five, sometimes. They only do fixed strokes in the Mark 60 and the Mark 38 in trap variants. All of their grips are identical. If you are buying a gun, it comes with a set stock drop on dimensions, whereas a Browning, they do two different stock types of drop, depending on model. And they do a variety of different stock types. They do an Invector Plus multi-choke and a Teague Invector Plus multi-choke in the Mark 38 and the Mark 70. And they do a fixed choke full and three quarter, and they do a fixed choke quarter and three quarter in the 60 and 38 respectively, or vice versa. Yes, they do a couple of little ones, the English Fields and the High Pheasants, which are choked slightly differently, but we're not talking about them now but they are involved in that. But that's, that is your options. You have such a limited option base. And yeah, you've got the Gilson XLR, which is awesome too. But you are limited in option base to something like this. And before I start knocking them anymore, I should also say with a Maruku, you get, I think, more hand finishing on the engraving. Yes, the patterns may not be so up to date and they kind of arc, hark back to their original patterns, but that's beautiful. So don't knock it. I mean, how do you think that? That's stunning. Right there, that is absolutely stunning. Flipping over to the browning again. If you want something with a palm swell, you gotta buy a browning. If you want an aggressive modern day fit ass gun, you gotta buy a browning. Or you gotta buy a Mark 38 and adjust it. The problem with Maruku is that they do not do off of the shelf guns that suit the modern market quite as well as other guns do. So one ends up having to buy a Maruku and invest more money and time into getting it right. Not that I think that's a bad thing because so many people buy off the shelf guns and leave them at that. It's just a little bit boring and vanilla. To have a gun that you have customized and made your own is awesome and is something that you can only truly appreciate if you have had one like that. But at the same time, it's equally as convenient just to go and buy a 725 Pro Sport as it is to convert a Mark 38 trap into a Fitas gun. And that is why Browning is potentially the better contender for many people out there. I mean, they've just brought out a long stocked edition. Their new crown with twin barrel sets, you've got a 30 inch and a 32 inch barrel set. That's amazing. That is amazing. So what do we conclude? What do we draw from any of this? The answer is, I do not know. Because actually there's such a void between these two very similar or identical internal guns. I am a Maruku fanboy. For the first two arguments I put forward, firstly, that they are not marketed and as such you feel like you're in the know, and that's not the reason I buy it. But it's the simplicity is the reason I buy them. They are handled so well. And the fact that you have to spend a lot of money to get one of these in a fixed choke to get the sort of handling that I like and that I think is miles ahead of others, potentially. There is issues, of course, with the fixed chokes is that they are not uh, superior steel proof, but that doesn't matter. Um, as we've discussed, you can put steel through them. Look, who knows is the answer is if you like shiny stuff, 
buy a brownie. If you don't like shiny stuff and just want something that is just a little bit more classy and just a regular old gun for breaking clays and killing pheasants, that is Mur Muruku Fools in the market. They are just wonderful things. The end. Guys, well, I hope I haven't upset you too much. Take care, goodbye, and well, I'll see you soon.